This is Vincent Schaefer speaking. I would like to take you into the laboratory and show you a few of the experiments that led us to our outdoor experiments in converting clouds into snow. Using a home freezing unit such as this, which has a temperature of around zero Fahrenheit, we can form supercool clouds just like those in the natural atmosphere by breathing into the box. The moist air from the breath condenses and forms a cloud. And this cloud cools to a temperature of about zero degrees Fahrenheit in a few seconds. Any moist thing placed in this box will produce such a cloud. By putting this cloud in the chamber, we can then do various things to it to see whether or not we can convert this supercooled cloud to snow. This cloud is made up of liquid water droplets. They are not snow crystals as yet, but by taking a tiny piece of dry ice such as this and scratching it so a few tiny fragments fall into the supercooled cloud, Long streaks develop, just like the vapor trail from an airplane. These contain millions and millions of tiny submicroscopic snow crystals, which grow very fast and assume exactly the same forms that natural snowflakes uh, show in an ordinary snowstorm. The particles grow very fast. They grow about a billion fold in volume in a few seconds, and if if it were possible to keep them supported in the air, they would grow very large, just like the snow crystals that fall from the sky on a cold winter's day. By applying more moisture to the cloud, the particles grow. Since the uh, water droplets evaporate over onto the ice crystals, we say that the vapor pressure of water is higher than the vapor pressure of ice crystals. Therefore, the water all disappears onto the ice crystals. The ice crystals that you see here are scintillating, and the colors are produced by the fact that they're tiny prisms and separate light into its various colors. By just swinging a piece of paper through the chamber, we can remove the cloud of snow crystals and go right back and form another super cool cloud, uh, such as you see me doing here. Then, uh, this time, I'm going to just take a small, ordinary sewing needle, cool below minus 35 degrees centigrade, and pass it briefly through the cloud. When I do this, uh, again, many millions of snow crystals form, and we get the same effect as is produced by dry ice. Dry ice is, is not uh, particularly uh, important as far as the fact that it's CO2, it's primarily important because it's, it's, the use of it is primarily important because it's colder than minus 35 degrees centigrade. The scintillations of the crystals uh, cause them to appear round in the uh, camera or in the photograph uh, because they tumble around and therefore uh, draw circular areas. They're actually tiny hexagonal plates and tiny hexagonal columns just like those which form in the high levels of the atmosphere. Uh, after um, they've been in the chamber for a short time, since they're growing very rapidly, they fall out. Here you see a close-up of these very beautiful twinkling crystals, and uh, they are very beautiful to see. They're not flying saucers, they're just ordinary snow crystals, uh, which are scintillating in the very brilliant light and settling toward the bottom of the box. The size of them is the order of five thousandths of an inch, uh, mostly hexagonal plates in this case, uh, very much like these. These are some which I uh, photographed that had been, were formed in the laboratory. This is a picture of the first cloud that we seeded back last November, flying in a small Fairchild plane and putting dry ice from a small dispenser in the bottom of the plane, we put about six pounds of dry ice into this four-mile cloud, and within a very few minutes, saw long streamers of snow falling uh, from the base of the cloud and evaporating into the drier air below. Under many conditions, of course, full-fledged snowstorms will be produced in this way. Nature at last has permitted to do a little something about the weather.